labs. It's like a. Well, there you go. Sorry. Hey, the fact that United we stand divided, we podcast, and right now it looks like Roberts United over there with a special guest. Well, you might as well meet him right now, and then I'll quickly talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah, so yeah. introduce so him. We were uh, kind of a little chatting there <laughs> when the intro stops. So sorry about that. Uh, hey, Robert from the U.S. with my special guest, my son, Blake. Say what's up. What's going on, guys? And, of course, we have Mr. Lionel from Canada. Uh, to be specific, Toronto, Canada. Ooh, hey. Toronto. <laughs> now, uh, of course, you know, I wasn't born here, but I've lived here. I love Toronto. I love the. Have you been to Toronto? Not, not yeah. friends have been to Toronto. Huh. Oh well, Toronto. Toronto. I love it, but at the same time, honestly, if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't be living in any city. I, I'd be somewhere, Fair. you know, on a lake. Yeah. But not an that said, <laughs> what's that? Not an island. Well, I'd have to be really rich for that, you know. True. Uh, but. Maybe you might not be yeah. All right. Before before we get any uh, going any further, I I, I just got uh, some uh, well two things actually I got to bring up. Excuse me. Well, I have to look way over here on my laptop. Uh, I, actually, I should uh, share this screen to be honest with you, um, so you can see it while I'm looking at it. And that's if I can find my mouse. <laughs> uh, I'm using two screens. That's why. Okay. Uh, so just give me one second while I bring this up. Screen. I wish I could have had this price. Did I freeze everything or just my computer? <laughs> I, I don't see anything frozen. Okay, well, that's good because I do. Um, well, it's, it's fine now, actually. All right. Uh, I'm going to go window because I can't use a Chrome tab on this. There we go. And I'm going to share that. I think it's not sharing. Does it not it work? Just, it popped up. You got oh, it did. I'm sorry, I I'm not seeing it, which kind of it reduces the point of my having shared it for starters. Oh, okay, so it just it, for some reason it's really really slow. All right, I'm gonna have to read it from the other one, which means I might have to put my glasses on. All right, I've never actually heard of this before, which is really embarrassing, as you can see, being a mulatto man. But Juneteenth honors a sig significant moment in history. Many people think of Emancipation Day. The end of American slavery is January 1st, 1863, the day President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation, declaring all persons held as slaves shall be then, is that thenceforth or henceforth? I don't know if that's a typo or not, but we'll go with it, uh, and forever free. But it wasn't until the 19th of June, or June 19th, Juneteenth, 1865, Two and a half years later, that news of the proclamation finally reached the quarter million slaves living in Texas. That uh, is actually mind boggling to me. I honestly, I had no idea. Uh, let me end that now. I had no idea that that was true or that that was a thing. I thought, you know, six months, eight months, a year, maybe a year and a half in the farthest corners of, of the United States of America. I didn't know two and a half years. So in all reality, I could see why this should be a little bit more out there with people knowing about June 19th. So I wanted to bring that up. And before I move on to the other thing, Blake, uh, you 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 served, right? Or still do? I'm not sure. Uh, I served for five years. I've been out for about four. Out oh, about four. Okay. First of all, keeping in mind, this is coming from a Canadian, but as all of us know, for, God, I'm not even sure how long it's been, over 100 years for sure, uh, well over 100 years, United States and Canada have been friends, have been there with each other uh, in, in battlefields and whatnot. So as a Canadian, I want to say thank you very much for your service. I, I appreciate, appreciate that. I, I actually yeah. served with a few Canadian oh, yeah. um, okay. folks in, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, I dated a, a, a German girl once who was in Canada because she actually um had met someone in the in the canadian service uh which was probably not that far away from where the american base i'm not sure if you've ever been to germany i'm not sure where the american bases are versus canadian bases. everywhere 
They're yeah, everywhere. well, I, that I know, that I know, yeah. But it's, it was Germany. southern Germany, so I, I don't know what. I, I think I think they probably weren't that far apart. They, I probably there's probably more than one time where they've all partied together. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, all right. Anyways, um, all right. I had to get that out of the way. Uh, and again, my mouse is getting in my way because <laughs> I'm going back and forth between the screens. So, uh, really, well, no, actually, I can bring that up later. So, Robert, what's on your mind right now, and what what do we want to talk about with Blake? Well, I didn't have anything real specific. Uh, one, one thing that I, I, I thought would be kind of cool is because, uh, you know, obviously, he, as you can see, he's a young man. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's been younger than me. <laughs> well, he, he's he's uh, ventured out and doing things that I could have only dreamt about at his age. And right. I think it would be a, kind of good to maybe if there's any young listeners, even though we're old, <laughs> to understand <laughs> the importance of living your youth and doing things that you can do now instead of waiting yeah. to do them later because as a 50 something now um right you know it was back in 2019 you know i was like oh i'm gonna try to get out there and see he's like dad sometimes you just have to do it just do it so then i literally yeah. said okay and i just got the credit card and I bought some tickets to Italy and then I went on my first, you know, international vacation. And now we've been traveling international at least once or twice a year now, which has been awesome. So I think yeah. it's important that uh, some of these younger uh, generation people understand that like, if you can do it now, do it now. Don't wait. Do you, uh, you know what? I, and I think people do take, do that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, yeah. Let's hear what your thought on that. Well, this obviously is, yeah. I think you think so. Yeah, this is obviously like to me, travel is one of the most important things in my life and probably will forever be one of the most important things in my life. And I tell this to people all the time. And I actually have many friends that are in their 60s that I talk to on a regular basis. And uh, one thing I realized when I was younger, that fortunately that I realized when I was younger was, you know, you don't get time back. You can get almost anything else back in life. You don't get time. And no. one of the things that I enjoy spending my time doing is traveling. And like he said, I've, I've done a good bit of travel. And one thing that's what I think is most of incredible about the world is the amount of different cultures and perspectives and people in the world that as different as we all are, we're so similar. I mean, going from Tunisia and Africa to Thailand to, to any, to Brazil, or living in Costa Rica, like wherever, we all have so much similarities um, that we can find, but also these incredible differences that are created over hundreds, if not thousands of years of cultures that have been like grown in these areas of the world, like Latin America or Asia and Europe, that they have these incredible traditions that, you know, you, you never really learn about until you go there you don't eat the food you don't meet yeah. the people you don't know the language you got to travel there you got to go there you can look on it on the internet um that's the second best thing right watching videos but actually getting to go somewhere and travel and meet the people the locals understand their culture like that is every time i come back from a trip every single time i come back to the u.s from a trip i'm like what am i doing like why like why am i not <laughs> doing this full time <laughs> every every single time I'm like yeah. how can i get to the point where i can do this just full time. I told well, you, you know, there are travel YouTube bloggers. Channel. Yeah, there are. <laughs> listen, I was just saying there are there, there are travel vloggers and yeah. some of them are very successful. And if you if you have experience in their travels already, which you do, uh, then you've already got a leg up on things you want to see. Like, you know, you are already aware of whether you like to go to Italy, Germany, Thailand or wherever. Right. Uh, I, I can tell you uh, the few places that I have on my bucket list that I absolutely if I have to drag, have somebody drag my ashes to, <laughs> well, that's not going to help me much, obviously, but uh, I'd like to, I'd love to go to Fiji, for instance, right? So I'd like to make that happen one day. I, I don't really care about Mexico, and I don't mean that derog in a derogatory sense, like I don't like Mexico. I just mean, it's too tourist trappy for me at this point. I, I, that's why I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me. There are parts of Brazil I'd like to see, but they're, they're not named Rio. 
right? If I go to Hawaii, I want to see the big island. I don't care about going to Hawaii, Oahu. But I think it's a lot of what you were saying is if I get to travel, I would like to actually get to know the people, the culture, eat the food traditionally, not with a big giant fake hat on my head saying, here I am a tourist. I want to yeah. experience what you're saying, what you saw, right? What you got to see. Um, and, it, you know, I, I, I guess I guess you guys are going to get to do that again. And I'm not at all jealous about racing cars in Germany. No. <laughs> yeah, and one of the best ways and like, exactly to your point, one of the best ways to experience any country, any culture is renting a car and driving. You just drive through wherever. Yes, gonna- thank you. No tour buses. No tour buses. Get yourself but, in a car, you know, get out, walk around. Yeah. And, you know, nothing against the tour buses, right? Like, because a lot of people have uh, anxiety yeah. about travel. Like, most of a lot yeah. of Americans, yeah. they have anxiety about going overseas, about going to a country. Where oh, Canadians, language. too. Canadians, yeah. too. Yeah, very, very similar. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that's like the second best, right? If you don't want to do that, then get a tour bus and yeah. you'll get some experience. But the best experience, yeah. renting a car and just getting lost. Getting lost. Yeah. Being you know what? To talk to people. Yeah. I, I had somebody tell me once that if you wanted to, if you could afford it and you wanted to do a lot of traveling in one shot, like you can take a couple of months, travel around Europe, travel around Asia or whatever, they would say, pick the country you're most comfortable with. And that would be the easiest for you to be the safest in in the first place as like a home base for the time you're gone. So if you ever have to get back before you can go back home, do that like in england for a lot of people or england in, in america and canada for a lot of people it would be england like they'd go to london or something and they would travel from london to paris to berlin uh keep you know uh, not kia <laughs> jesus <laughs> no not there not right we now could, but i don't want you to do right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you wouldn't want to right now but that was just gonna pop in my head but you know some european place anywhere right uh and, and then if they because if they felt because a lot of people are like well i don't think i can get by with the you know the language barrier now, of course they don't understand that almost anywhere you go in the world if it's touristy english is going to come up in a lot of places yep. Um, yeah, 100%. but how many yeah. places have you been to, uh, with and without the military? Well, so I was only stationed in Italy. I, oh, okay. I, I mean, I mean, I went, I mean, so I did for work trips, I went to Greece and Germany a couple of times, but oh, uh, nice. I, I've been everywhere I've traveled has been on my personal. personal oh, even better. Wow. Well, even better. Even yeah, better. So, so but, you, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, countries maybe are like low thirties. Um, you know, cities maybe double. I not quite sure. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I. You know <laughs> you what? So many places you lose count. You need, That's a lot. You need. You need to sit down because I got you beat. Let me tell you all the countries I've been to. Are you ready? Are you right. ready? I've already got the number in front of you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. I, I, I've been to the United States. I've been to Canada because I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I. I. I literally. I've driven to Chicago. Um, and only because I was trying to go from Winnipeg to, uh, uh, I think it was Minneapolis, uh, cause I wanted to see, you know, Minneapolis and St. Paul. And we basically got to the freeway going through the city. And I was looking at the map. I'm old. It was a paper map. <laughs> and, and I was saying, you know, Milwaukee's not that much further. Let's just go to Milwaukee. And we get to Milwaukee and I said, you know, Chicago is like right down the road. Let's go to Chicago. We get to Chicago. My buddy looks at the map and says, you know, Detroit's. I said, no. <laughs> and we got far enough. <laughs> I go but yeah, you know, so, so I, you know, yeah. the crazy thing is when I was planning the trip to Germany, we are flying into London because that was the cheapest, quickest route. Yeah. So we're doing, you know, we hit London, France. Um, Berlin, Netherlands, Germany, Luxembourg, Luxembourg, Dang. You know, like five or six countries in nine days. I mean, how crazy is that? <laughs> uh, it, it does sound crazy, but like that's right up my alley. Uh, as someone who loves photography, I would actually be in, in the heaven. Uh, there's so many things to see. I mean, every single thing that, you know, uh, Luxembourgians would be like, mm-hmm, so what? I see that every day and I'd be like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. 
But and, more and importantly, sorry, if either one of you decides you want to give up your seat on the plane heading to <laughs> Germany to race that car, I will, if you want that badly, take your spot. If you want that. Uh, hmm. It's a hard one. <laughs> Play the PlayStation yeah, or go to fun. Germany? Let's see. <laughs> I'll take go to, go to Germany. <laughs> just if, if just remember what I told just things. remember what I told just remember what I told you though uh Robert uh don't forget to order the spätzle und schnitzel don't say and say und that's spätzle und schnitzel you you won't regret it okay let me just say this I won't remember that in three months either. So, okay. <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know. Maybe I should text him. Right. What the hell did you say that was? <laughs> uh, just yeah, take, just yeah. make sure you got Duolingo on your phone or basically, no, no. You know what? Ask Gemini or, or even better. Um, what is that? Uh, the chat GPT four O, not zero. Uh, the conversation one. If you yeah. start speaking to it in another language, it will speak to you in that language. And then you could tell it in English to just respond in the other language. And when you don't understand, just say, I don't understand. Tell me what that means in English and how to pronounce it in whatever language, German, whatever. Right. Yeah, I tried that out yesterday. It works beautifully. And, and to be fair, as helpful as that is with how global the economy is and how global English is, like English is the, yeah. the dominant yeah. travel, it's dominant business language, everything. Yeah. It's you yeah, know, it's absolutely. gonna be really hard to find somewhere where no one speaks English. It really is. It's, it's not easy to do. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a really good point, and and it it definitely would take a lot of people's anxiety out. I personally, if I could travel a lot of places, I wouldn't even mind if I couldn't understand them for a, for a while. Oh yeah, and that's like amazing learn. because you you have an excuse um, to you know <laughs> do anything pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's your excuse. Is, I, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can say whatever I want and say I no speaker. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so to wrap that up, so I was just, you know, it seems like a minor thing. It's like, oh, it doesn't sound like that big of a deal. But uh, when I look back as a young man, I could have done some of this travel and I, I just didn't think about it. Yeah, I, just, I didn't do it. So I just think it's important that people realize that if you have an opportunity to do it, do it now. Don't say, oh, well, I'll do that, you know, blah, 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 or I'll do that then, or because it then never comes. Or all of a sudden, yeah. you get a job, family, kids, house paint, you know, all these things then start weighing you down, and you suddenly are at a point where it's more difficult. Not that it's impossible, right, right. but it becomes a lot more yeah. difficult. And so there's almost never a good time to do anything. There's ne <laughs> right. It's never a good time to buy a house. It's never a good time to go travel. It, money will always <laughs> come back. Money will always come back. Your time won't. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. You can't get your time back. So, I mean, if if you have to do, uh, if you get the, if you get the opportunity, I totally agree. You know, go for it, have some fun, um, enjoy yourself. You learn a lot, and you never know. For some people, uh, it include it could include uh, finding new new business opportunities. You might uh, discover a new passion that becomes something that makes you lots of money, or you might be able to find a, a vocation that allows you that travel uh, and allows you that freedom. So either way, you know, uh, I agree. Go for it if you have the chance. Uh, and yeah. also, do you guys have a time machine I could borrow? <laughs> maybe in a no? few years. No, maybe, I'm still. Uh, maybe in a few. That, years. That, is that um um? Was it Ted and somebody? Um, Ted. Bob, Who's Bill, Ted? and Ted's big adventure. Don't they, have, what, don't they well, do a time machine? Bill, but God, man, no. Well, yes. That's, Who is it? <laughs> it's somebody like that. Yeah, somebody oh, my God. Bill. I hope Anthony watches this because we, we're going to rib you next time we're playing on the PS5. Um, <laughs> uh, Bill, Bill and Ted. Excellent adventure. That's what you're talking about. Which said, Bill and Ted. No, you said Bob or something. Like I said that. Bob at first. I said no, it's Bill and Ted. Uh, well, I didn't hear that. It, it, it uh, I don't know. It, yeah. It, it, yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't seen that movie. But yeah, they they make it. They. Have I, a, I can a, I can understand movie. if you haven't seen it. It's an older movie. You know, not everybody's actually seen the movie. Uh, most people have, but not everybody's seen it. But um, 
What was the reference to that? You told me just because you're talking about a time machine. Yeah, yeah. a time machine. I said, uh, you know, they have one. So, you know, maybe you could build your own like they did. Well, that's only because George Carlin brought it to them. It was <laughs> George right. Carlin. I, I remember. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a uh, hot tub uh, time machine anyway, would be more uh, appropriate. <laughs> that's kind of what I just wanted to touch on. I thought that was kind of uh, yeah, yeah. an interesting point, you know, like. You know, one of the things I have to say, this is and this is one trip of his that I, I'm like super jealous of, honestly, is I'll never forget when I saw pictures that he took from the restaurant at the top of that building from Hangout or Hangover. You remember that restaurant at the, the top of that big, tall building from what? Hangover. Two. Hangover two? Oh, I never Trump saw either one of them. Oh, my gosh. When now I see I'm gonna, I'm gonna rash movies, you about listen, a movie listen, listen, movies I haven't seen are idiotic, stupid movies. You haven't I'm seen classic like movies. Brilliant, you saw brilliant Bill and movies. Ted. You, this is no idiotic, more idiotic than Bill and Ted. Okay, fair enough. All right. Anyways, All right. <laughs> he he went to that restaurant that was in the movie, and the pictures were epic. I mean, it's just like the restaurant is outdoors. It's like how many stores? Stories like 150 stories up or something like that, or. Quite that I think it's like 70. Oh, 70. Okay, whatever. It's it's like it's it, the pictures are amazing. Yeah, at night and they were out there cool. drinking and partying and yeah. Yeah, so so it's so that's in Bangkok, uh in Thailand. It's called oh, wow. at State Tower. Yeah, and it's so in the movie Hangover 2, that's when they're having like the brunch outside, and then like there's a help like they get into like a fight or something with the little Chinese dude that they're doing like a deal with. I, I can't remember, but yeah, but yeah, we went there and um uh, funny story we're at the we're on top and there's a bar it's called a sky bar so it's kind of it's at the very edge of the building and it's kind of has like a little walkout and there's a bar in the middle and me and my friends are hanging out and one of my friends like disappears and we didn't know where he went a few minutes later we're like walking around and we see him standing at a table and we're like what like what's he doing at this table so we walk over he's got like he's got this like hot towel he's got like a little thing of peanuts and he has a singular shot just like one shot and he's like He's like, I think I just spent sixty five dollars on the shot. And we're oh, like, no. what? <laughs> like sixty five dollars on a shot, dude? And yeah, it, it turned out they had a, a shot on the menu, and he didn't do the the uh, currency exchange, and so he he spent sixty five dollars, and they gave him a hot towel at his own table. Oh my! God. <laughs> <laughs> All for a shot, for a single shot. How long was he at the table the whole night? Oh. Wait a minute, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 I mean, we ended up a hot towel with the yeah, yeah. A hot, I don't know. It was like it was, you know, maybe midnight. And but you know, all the other drinks on the menu, I think the cheapest was like maybe $17. So I mean it, it was expensive, but yeah. For, and for Thailand, yeah. that's insane. I mean, for you know, $16 for a well, yeah, because I, I, I bet there I bet there's some place you can go in Thailand for a lot cheaper things. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah somebody like, got the somebody got the joke. <laughs> We would. Um, and, and you also got to yeah. be careful what you're looking for too, in, in case it's not what you're looking for. But a lot of that depends. Boys. That a lot depends of on where you. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, if anybody's watching and gets offended by what he said, that is literally what they call themselves there. It is not a derogatory term in yeah. Thailand. It's yeah. literally that term. So yeah. nobody's being yeah, misgendered no, I mean, there. So yeah, yeah. Lot, lots of stories from Thailand. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool country. Yeah, they, 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 uh, he had some pictures too where they uh, took elephants through the, you know, the jungle, the jungle, drinking beer on the back of an elephant. It's just like, what? <laughs> That's like oh, a redneck God. in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, they give you beer everywhere you go. I mean, like they see, and during that time we went was their, uh, was their new year. And so during yeah. their new year, they do what's called a water festival throughout the whole country. Oh. And in Bangkok specifically, the water festival includes people just, I mean, th tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people in the streets with water guns everywhere, <laughs> shooting Damn. each other, the whole city, all the time. So, so this so, is like Tomatina, but with water guns instead of tomatoes. Yeah. And so we'd be <laughs> we'd be in our we'd be in a taxi in a car. We'd have the window down. Someone would come up with a water gun and just douse the inside of the car. And Man. then run away. Like it's crazy. It's like a free for all the whole city. So you're but getting. It's got to be to the blues. point where you don't even get mad because it's just such yeah. a cool thing to be part of. You know, it's like yeah. you'd be thinking, "Oh, oh yeah, my god, you, you got my waterproof watch wet, and my waterproof phone wet, and my waterproof <laughs> wallet wet." 
Thanks. Yeah, you, you need the morning. You know you're gonna get soaked all day long. It's just uh, yeah. Man, okay, so yeah, you you've you've done some cool, fun things. Did I did I tell you guys about the time I saw a squirrel? Um, no one species. Nothing. <laughs> well, it was a squirrel, um, <laughs> not a chipmunk. Hey, I've seen a red squirrel. I've seen a gray squirrel. I've seen a black squirrel, but. Uh, no, seriously, there are places in Canada I haven't seen. Well, obviously, it's a huge country, but uh, some of the best places to, to go in Canada I haven't been to yet. Uh, Fun fact uh, yeah. Canada has the longest coastline in the world. Uh, I'm, yeah, <laughs> glad you said that. It's true. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people don't know that, but then again, it's pretty obvious, though, because you Another know, oceans fact. on three sides. So, Canada has. <laughs> Uh, more trees than stars in our galaxy. I doubt that. But, yep. There's 400 billion trees in Canada, and there's between two to 300 billion stars in our galaxy. Uh, you know what? Those numbers are probably gone because Dutch elm disease alone has killed, you know, several hundred million of them in the last yeah. five, 10 years. So, <laughs> but that is, that is interesting. I never, I've never heard that one. So, uh, that is kind of cool. Uh, I have a feeling that the United States has more trees. You just don't really notice it. You got to realize a lot of Canada doesn't have many trees. Those are concentrated in like four different areas. It yeah. just looks like it's spread out everywhere. When you go above a certain part, you get to the tundra. There is no trees. And right. A little past that, no vegetation at all. None. Uh, yeah, it's like living in Nevada. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, so I have a, a, a question. I, I probably, well, actually, I don't know the answer to this, but uh, do you use, Blake, uh, do you use uh, uh, Android or iOS? Android. All right, then we can continue to talk. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's funny uh, because I, I can't <laughs> count how many times I've gotten crap from people, mostly women, for having an Android all the yeah. time. All yep. the time. Well, it's ridiculous. So like, and it's, 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 you see some of the commercials I've got out recently, and I've seen some of the ads. Oh, like you know what? Here, let me let me uh, just real quick. Uh, uh, with iOS 18, iPhones dialer will finally get the most basic smartphone feature. What they're <laughs> talking about? What they're talking about is the fact that in iOS 18, you will be able to actually open your dialer and type numbers one at a time and the suggestions for your contacts will begin to appear as they appear as numbers it's t9 dialing that we've had in every single android phone since day one because every single dumb phone prior to that had t9 dialing since night uh 1989, I want to yeah, say. I, I didn't know they didn't do that. Honestly, of course, I don't use it, but I, I didn't I, know I, either. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I, I literally, I can't believe it. Like I was shocked by that. And there's a few other things, and they're talking about, oh, we've got this now, and we could do this, and and everyone else is going to have to catch up. And I'm looking at, it and I'm going, I was doing that in ice cream sandwich. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, but you know, the one thing that. I'll give Apple props for is they have the most incredible marketing. I mean, the they're the fact yeah, that they can still own and become the most profitable company in history. Yeah. Off of well, they they started products. off at the right time too. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, perfect competition. But I mean, the fact that they can offer a product like that that really is only it's sold through marketing. It's not sold through their functionality. It's sold through marketing, right? It's, like, that's their. Core. Oh no! Yeah, well, in all in all fairness, some of their functionality is phenomenal. Uh, it, that that whole walled garden thing is what's always turned me off. The fact that you can't change this and you can't change that. iOS iOS 18 is changing a lot of that. You, you change your wallpapers. You can move your icons around. You can put a bunch of icons in folders and stick them all at the bottom and have nothing on your on your home page. They even have, I don't even know what they call it, but it's equivalent to an app drawer now where you can open that up and see where all your apps are. You keep the rest of the phone clean. And again, they're looking at it like that's some miraculous new. And they've spent years, over a decade, saying, well, it's your guys' phones look cluttered. Well, first of all, you only put the icons on the home screen if I want to. The point is I can if I want to, right? I don't have to if I don't want to. Now they finally have that choice. 
uh, 16, 17, 18 years later, they finally have the choice. And, yeah, I, and they're all I, like, well, you guys. Well. The big Apple show they have every year that they, they show this on the big screen and the crowd goes, yeah, woo. And I'm like looking at my Android phone going, what? I could do that in 1995. You know, he's like, yeah. what? Well, <laughs> well, maybe not 1995. Well, you but know, yeah, you get my point. I was like, hey, what? Hey, listen. I've been able to do that for, you know, 10 years. This is my Pixel 7 Pro. My Pixel 8 Pro is the one I'm actually doing, uh, doing the camera. There's a camera with. Um, I put, uh, I was going to say iOS. <laughs> Wait, don't, block me, me. Uh, don't block me don't block me i i i put uh android 15 beta 3 because it, it came out yesterday and i was like what it's the third beta remember what i told you i'm gonna put this on this and, and then the fourth beta i will put on my main phone i put this on and i swear to you in less than 10 minutes flat it was so good it is they start to treating it like it's like it's not a major and all these people on the internet are like well it's not a major update there's just a few little tweaks here and there it is a massive major update there are so many things better in this including how it took all the jank and eliminated it completely well not completely it feels like it on my on my pixel 8 because my pixel 8 was getting a little janky but but now it's not again uh, and you notice the video is much smoother and not freaking out well, that's partially because I'm plugged in too, but uh, I put it on there too. And the only issue I actually had are two things and one, everyone else has had it. Not everyone, a lot of people. Um, and, and the other one is uh, my one credit card. Everything else works, all my tap to pay, except one credit card. Even though the tap to pay works, I cannot open the app. It will not authenticate. It, well, I can open it, but it won't authenticate. Luckily, they have a website that's just secure and I use the same authentication. So I can still get in there and see how much money I have to give them right this minute. But <laughs> uh, nonetheless, uh, some of the new features in this are things that they're also bragging about in iOS 18. And I thought that was funny. Well, the, the, the so. thing is, like, what you got to consider, and this, this is why I say their marketing is everything, because that's going to get people to buy a new iPhone. The fact that you can move your icons. Absolutely. Yes. Like how, how brilliant is that? To Usually restrict will. that basically from your user base. And then release it in a I, later, you know, they, they plan their, their I, feature releases way in advance. I mean, this, this is I like, see, I, no, you're absolutely right. See, your dad is laughing, right? I know why he's laughing. He goes, because it's like, well, we've been doing that for a long time. And, and, and all the Apple sheep, the sheeple have been saying, uh, oh, that's stupid. It's cluttered. We don't need to do that. If I needed to do that, blah, 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 blah. And the first time they said, well, we're going to let you group them into folders. They went right on. And it's like, yeah, well, we've been doing that since uh, Android 2, I think, 2.1, right? Something like that. Um, and, and now this is coming. They're going to say, and then they're, they're saying, it's, oh, uh, oh, Google should copy this. Google already has everything you're talking about. Copying and if we Google, don't have make it, this clear. <laughs> even yeah. if they do, here's the thing. I want Apple to innovate. I want them to get better because if there's no competition, then basically Samsung wins. Google won't be able to keep making pixels because where's the competition going to just go against Samsung? No, right? Samsung will just buy out Google because they won't have anybody to sell to if there's no Apple. No one will care. They'll just buy Samsung and then Samsung can put whatever they want on it. It won't matter if it's good or not because that's what everybody will be buying. And then we're done. So competition is the best thing. So I agree. Their marketing is great. Google's Google has clever marketing that's funny, but it doesn't speak to people. Nobody knows what the hell they're talking about. You know, that's well, why I, I think the marketing is, is like it's a great phone for a great price. Like it, it, it kind of sells itself. You don't really need to, you know, push it as hard as an iPhone because it doesn't cost a thousand dollars. No, at least for the, no, the, no, no the it's, it's it, no, it's well, the A, yeah. But but then again, you don't pay a thousand dollars for the smallest iPhone either. So, yeah, it's like seven hundred or maybe six fifty. He doesn't yeah, buy yeah, yeah. anything. He only buys A series phones because yeah. he won't spend the money on it. No, on I, I will never. Oh, spend are you anything. serious? No. Yeah, it's a complete waste of money. Oh, well, what you kind of phone of do you have series. then? What what do you, what do you have? I have the uh, the seven A. Oh, okay, all right. So you're well versed in this whole Pixel stuff. 
there we go. Yeah, I've always had pixels. The thing is, you know, with technology, and this goes the same thing for TVs, for monitors, for cameras. Yeah. They get replaced every two years. They double pretty much in, in their ability. And so, and when they double, they completely lose their value, right? You never really get your money back on a phone. Maybe a little bit. Maybe. I, I never do because I've kept all my phones. I just yeah. keep them. So it's so it's like, <laughs> like it's, it's a you know it's a sunk cost. It's it's gone, right? Like that's money you're never gonna yeah. get back. So I'd rather. You know, I'd rather spend on traveling, right? I'd rather, you know, oh, buy a I, ticket. Yeah, no, I get, yeah, no, I get that. And you know what? If the phone does what you want it to do, then yeah, why not, right? And I don't really see, I mean, from my perspective, what else do you need from a phone that a 7A doesn't provide? Uh, Well, I tell you one thing the 7A couldn't do is offer you the picture you're seeing right now exactly as it is. It's, but he doesn't it do It wouldn't that. be the it's same quality. A, it's got a really good camera. <laughs> No, but it couldn't. It couldn't do this because this is a fifty megapixel sensor. Seven A doesn't have a fifty megapixel. Oh, I, I believe. I believe but, the A's have the same camera. No, as the no, it doesn't the, have the fifty. No. Even even the Pixel Seven Pro didn't have a fifty megapixel. That was only started in the eight. Okay. Well, okay. So I, I guess I outside of something that's a profession, you know, like outside of something that you require for, um, you know, the job or something that you need, and yeah. but like for you know ninety nine percent of the user base. I feel like you could. No, get no, I, I agree. And the thing is, is that for some reason, for a couple of years, you couldn't even buy a new Pixel in India. And they finally went back and started doing that again. And now they're giving them services that they weren't giving them for a number of years. Uh, and they I, almost everything that you can get in the US, you can now get in India, which includes all of the Pixel lineup from, from the yeah. A all the way to the Pro. Uh, and that's a huge market. Yeah. That's a massive market. But they have their and own. You know. They're doing something right in Japan. Japan is is out. The pixels in Japan are outselling the iPhones. They're outselling Samsung in Japan, which is wow. Well, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And he's a Google <laughs> Fi subscriber too, because uh, the way he travels, it's like he pretty much has service almost anywhere he goes. That's actually pretty pretty good. I did not know that because I you know we don't get Fi here, so. Um, yeah, it's, they make it really easy to swap, and then also with Fi, you get fifty percent off all their phones. Fifty. So I don't pay. I, I've never. I haven't paid over two hundred fifty dollars for a phone in the past four years, and I get a well, brand why, new seven A. Then why didn't you? Why didn't you get an eight A? Because I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Because the eight A ain't going to be that much different from the seven A, anyways. Right. Uh, there's I, a, I there's a few things that are years. different, but all of the stuff that was that was only for the eight series when the eight A was announced, they said it's going to have this as well, and even one thing that I had to wait for on on my eight Pro. Um, most of that stuff is as as of this week or last week available on seven and even in some cases six series. So a lot of those things that were exclusive to Pixels are are in some cases open to all Android phones. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but even if you haven't got some of those updates yet, you will. Uh, so there's a lot. There's a lot more that your phone can do now than when you got it. I guarantee it. Yeah, and that's one and thing I like about all Android phones. They don't just say, "Oh, you're going to get a new iOS and it's going to work differently. You're going to have this three or four new features and be able to do your folders differently." Uh, they'll they, you get feature drops and you you know you get new things. And even if you don't have a Pixel, you get new stuff. Samsung puts their own new things on, sometimes based on Android or the Android versions. At other times, they just say we can do it better and they make it directly in, in uh, one UI. Yeah. And, and the thing is, like, Android and iOS are so different because Android is a decentralized platform, right? There's, like, a lot of different companies right. that develop on Android. There's only one yeah. company that on iOS. So, exactly. you know, again, yeah. like, like the competition, like you said, it doesn't really work the same way for iOS because it's just Apple, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But their competition is basically against everybody else. But they don't ever really look at it that badly, uh, in in a panicky state because they know that a they could survive off the U.S. market alone because yeah, they have the such. Yeah, I mean it's massive. But but the interesting thing is they went from uh, computers to they started to make more money on iPods. And then, uh, and then, and then, it, it shifted over to iPhones, and then it kind of shifted to computers and iPads combined, back to phones. And, and now, basically, if you take just the phones, it's I think fifty percent or more than everything else Apple makes money on, and it's kind of 
mind-boggling and scary. If people stop buying their phones, they would have to rely only on their on their computers. And people say, well, yeah, a lot of people have their computers, millions, tens of millions. That's very true. But compared to people using Windows, they yeah. wouldn't be. I mean, it, 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 it's also <laughs> too that people are going to buy a phone a lot sooner. They're going to drop twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars on the top iMac, you know, or something. So, yeah, and, yeah. When, um, yeah. Another fun fact: Apple makes uh, three hundred and fifty million dollars a day in profit and net profit. They, they make a little over a hundred billion a year in net profit. I'm sorry. What now? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I, I've ever heard that number before. Was that actually a number? Or did you make that up? I'm not. Um, up. <laughs> no, seriously. I, 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 uh, I found a five dollar bill in my wallet once. <laughs> no, that's um, like that. At, at one point, they had over two hundred billion dollars in cash reserves. That's just like my checking account. I mean, can, can I can I just explain to you that that somewhere around 1961, I don't think there was that much money in the world. Probably I, no. I mean, <laughs> well, at least 1941, anyways. I mean that that was kind of the joke in Austin Powers. You remember the uh, one billion dollars? Yeah, and they laughed at him. They said, "There isn't that much money in the whole world." <laughs> yeah. Oh man! And to put that in yeah. perspective, that's that's Elon Musk's net worth is around is a little over two hundred billion for one man. It's another crazy thing. I, you know, I swear to you, when I was young, um, and I knew about oh, I forgot his name, um, the aviator guy from the turn of the previous century. There, uh, good God, I can't remember his name. Sorry, the aviator guy. Yeah, the guy with Spruce Goose guy. Oh, no, the big wooden plane. What, what's what's the matter? With uh, me? The Wright brothers? No, no, no Spruce way. Goose. You said. I was thinking. I was thinking the first flight. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I know. Spruce I know who you're talking about, but I can't think of the name off the top of my head. That is so weird. I, I can't remember his name. Uh, they made a movie about was, him. He was uh, for a time the richest man in the world because he had a little over one point five or two point five billion dollars or something like that, and and I thought. My God, could you imagine having that much money? Like 10 years later, I found out that the richest man in the world had $16 billion. I was like, what the hell? How did that change so fast? What? You know, Rockefeller, uh, uh, what did he have? Like four or $500 million, which in 1920-something yeah. would have been sick. Yeah, his, or 30 his something or whatever that was. was would, would have been around $400 billion. Yeah, yeah, he would have been richer than 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 Musk in, in reality. Um, so people will say, "Well, he did hard to have hardly money." Yeah, but for its day, but but then again, his money probably would go further today even than it did then. And I, the reason why I say that is because if you went to an expensive restaurant, a piece of steak could be as much as five dollars in 1922. You can get a a uh, filet mignon in an expensive restaurant a five-star restaurant for like a hundred dollars a five-star restaurant five dollars to a hundred dollars versus 400 million to 200 billion it doesn't match up the same numbers right it's not the same um so you would i mean as a rich person right i've never I, paid a hundred dollars for a filet I, no no I no no it, 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 filet is like the tops okay it, it, Okay, sorry. I guess I'm thinking Canadian money. You're absolutely right. <laughs> no, you no, you are. That is no. It's Canadian money. So, uh, because in all honesty, I usually pay between forty five. Well, not now. I don't have any money right now. But uh, forty five and sixty five, depending on the restaurant for a filet mignon. Uh, it also yeah. depends on is it a four ounce or an eight ounce? Because I ain't ordering no sixteen ounce filet mignon. Yeah, I'd never eat it. I, I wouldn't yeah. be able to eat it, and even if I could, who's gonna who's gonna sell me a car so I can sell it and get it, pay for the meal? <laughs> a sixteen ounce filet mignon that'd be expensive because the four ounces uh, usually, well, at least a few years ago, anyways, uh, it was averaging around 50, forty-five to fifty-five dollars in Toronto. Except for the most expensive restaurants, were sixty-five or so dollars. Yeah, four uh, ounces. That's not even worth the uh, juices. No, it's 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 a, it's a nugget. Yeah. What? That's right. a medallion. It's a nugget. That's, that's, it's, that's, it's, that's, it is it is a medallion. But uh, again, uh, but the thing is, is that you could get the eight ounce one 
for for about ten twelve dollars more that's not like they were doubling the price so people yeah. who ordered the small one didn't want a lot of food or they wanted a lot more vegetable or potato or soup right and and, and you know um, surprisingly today actually I, I was thinking about this this morning because i went to kroger the meat prices here in nashville compared to san antonio are almost 40 percent more <laughs> come to canada come to canada <laughs> <laughs> like a choice ribeye because i buy ribeyes almost like every friday and the choice ribeye in san antonio you're going to pay around 10 to 11 dollars a pound here at kroger you're paying 18 dollars. okay huh. you said choice ribeye choice ribeye let's see not prime choice. not even prime just choice so like the bottom of the barrel like cheapest cut you're paying choice around 18 ribeye here. cost at Sobies, because I buy I buy a two and a half pound tomahawk usually, and I'll pay less than forty dollars. Jeez, I'll pay less than forty dollars for a two and a half pound tomahawk bone in ribeye from the store. Here, that would uh, be seventy dollars. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to find something that has a price on it from one of our actually more expensive grocery stores. Uh, fun little, I, uh, our funny little story is, uh, and this is many years back. Uh, Susan's <laughs> dad has passed, and but when he was alive, uh, we had ate at this restaurant in Nashville, and they they have a particular like you could actually go up to the case and look at the steaks and pick the one you wanted. And they could, cut, I mean, they could pretty much do anything you want, right? And yeah. they had one particular cut that was they didn't show the price. They just said, you know, market price by the ounce. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, I want this many ounces of that. And they looked at me and said, are you sure? He's like, yeah, $154 slice of steak. Yeah. We all started busting out. <laughs> he's like, what? Uh, he ate most of it. But I'm like, $154 for a slab of steak. It's I'm probably, just like. It's probably dry aged. Or have, you ever, have, you ever, have you ever got uh, uh, purchased or had anybody offer you Kobe beef? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, yeah. it is absolutely phenomenal. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's marbled so unbelievably. There's no cows other anywhere else in the world that are like that. So that's why it's yeah. so bloody expensive. But yeah, they have Japanese and American, which it can cost Australia. it can cost well over a hundred dollars for a piece that's like yeah. Yeah. Like that. yeah. And it's only this thick, and you end up slicing thin pieces just so you can say, Well, here's a snack. You don't make a burger out of this stuff. It's too expensive. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, like, American Wagyu is pretty close, but it's not as expensive, obviously, because it's here. But Japanese, like A5 yeah. Wagyu, which is like a yeah. prime, the prime cut, you're paying in a restaurant, you'll pay probably around three to 400 per 16 ounces. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about the, it's, a, it's pretty close to the same thing in Canada, just to buy the beef itself, not in a restaurant. Yeah. So uh, I think there's only a couple of restaurants where you can even order it, and it's probably only a few times a year. Like yeah. it's not like they have a a bunch in the freezer or something. And like honestly, that. you're not allowed to freeze that kind it. of stuff, anyways. But yeah, it's not worth it. You can get like if you get a prime ribeye. Honestly, if you know how to cook it well, it's not far off. It's just the thing is that the, the Japanese the wagyu it's got so much intramuscular fat that it's got so much juice and it just like coats your whole mouth. Well, yeah, it's that marbling. That's why. That's what. It's, that, like, a that's what does it. it's like a dessert steak. It's this. It, it, it is, and I mean, I went to see what it was like, uh, two years ago. Uh, I drove up to uh, my friend's uh, cabin or cottage um, uh, about an hour and a half, two hours from here or whatever. Um, and I think uh, sometime in the evening and he's getting rid of barbecue and he's, he's making hamburgers or steaks or whatever. I can't remember. And he says, oh, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Hang on a second. And he grabs a plate and he puts these tiny little pieces of meat. And I said, um, and he says, that's Kobe beef. Everybody's getting a little bit. And, and we just basically took that and went, oh, my God, it was like heaven. It's like melts in your mouth. And then, and then uh, he, you know, he's got a little bit more. So he gives everybody a little bit. And he says, okay, that's it. Done. I said, I hate to ask. First of all, thank you. But <laughs> what did that cost you? He says, because, uh, it was about $185. I said, you just paid to give everybody a, a, a bite-sized piece of meat. <laughs> it cost you $185. It took you 37 seconds to cook it. And about five seconds for it to be eaten for $185. Yeah. How much did the rest of the meat 
and buns, relish, mustard, ketchup, potatoes, potato salad, whatever you got out here, and, and, and beverages cost, and your gas. He says, well, probably less than $200 for everything, <laughs> including the gas. <laughs> so, yeah, and he's almost doubled that with a snack of meat. But yeah. I, uh, I'm not I'm not complaining because it was, oh, my God, it was good. Uh, I just uh, doubt I'll ever get to taste it again. Unless it's cheap in Japan and I ever get to go to Japan. I imagine <laughs> it's probably cheaper there, right? It's a little cheaper. A little? Oh, God. So it's it's still, is it still a delicacy there, too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's another thing. Like you know, it's still, for them, prohibitively expensive for regular eating. Wow. Yeah. I think the one thing about Japan is uh, I, 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 you know, I could honestly say this. I wouldn't want to live there. I'd love to visit. I'd never want to. Well, it just depends on where you go. But I, I wouldn't want to live any place like Kyoto, Tokyo, Nagasaki, any place where I'd be lucky to find an apartment the size of my bed. Maybe considered yeah. big. And, and yeah. anybody who thinks it's not a joke, look at YouTube. There's people. Oh, yeah. No, videos yeah. on YouTube. They, they literally have to build stoves and showers into the same pieces. I mean, it's like ridiculous. But, yeah. but that's what they do. A small yeah. island with more people than Canada eight times over. Yeah. Wait, how Great. many times over? How many people are in Japan? I don't remember. No idea. Uh, it's a lot mm -hmm. times over. It's way more than Canada, that's for sure. You can put everybody from Japan in Canada with plenty of room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting thing. So at work, we I, I did this uh, calculation. So you can fit every single person in the world, everyone, eight, all 8 billion people, inside of Texas in six-person households with a quarter acre of land, all with their own house. A quarter acre? <laughs> a that's quarter pretty... acre. Six person per house, every single person in the world, you can fit it inside the, the, the square mileage of Texas. So if there's an apocalypse, we're hell heading down to Santone. Maybe. I mean, that's not including, you know, infrastructure and you know, supply chain. Oh, hell with infrastructure. <laughs> scoop, your, scoop your own poop and get on with it. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm glad you didn't use Ontario as an example because I don't want all 8 billion people here, but Ontario... Uh, actually dwarfs Texas in size, which is crazy. Sure um, it is big, big, yeah. But at the same time, half of Ontario is, un well, it's not unlivable. It's not that far north, but um, it's far enough north that the winters are stupid and brutal and you wouldn't want to live there. Right. Uh, also, a lot of, you couldn't farm on a lot of it because it's literally just the Canadian Shield once you go a certain distance north. It's just rock with trees growing yeah. out of it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, that's why you guys have Ice Road Trucker. <laughs> TV that's show. mostly Yukon and Alaska. Yeah. So I know. Uh, it's just a joke, but I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, who wants to live up that far north? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, well, amazing enough, some people do. Don't get me wrong. I would love to visit the Yukon and Alaska, um, but I would probably be a wussy and go in the middle of summer when the sun yeah. did not set. I would one hundred percent go in the middle of summer. I am a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I honestly, I'd like to see the landscape of of Nome. I, I isn't that where that that's where the nine point quake was in the fifties, wasn't it? I don't know. Uh, there, there's pictures of where the road split, uh, and it dropped like eight feet or six feet or something like that. So I, I just want to know if they actually left it like that and just moved the road over. Because uh, it would look like really interesting landscape, and they probably got like plaques somewhere commemorating it. There's this Things place like I can't remember where it is. I don't know if it's in. I think it's somewhere in Asia. But there was a sinkhole in the middle of a city that was like a perfectly circular sinkhole. Sorry, Anchorage. Didn't mean to interrupt you, but it was Anchorage that had with the earthquake. Sorry, go on. Oh, okay, Anchorage. Okay. Yeah, no, there, there's this place. I you can pull up. You can look it up. But there's a, a massive. I mean, we're talking like 300 foot diameter circle, maybe even more. That it was. Right. A, like a 400 foot deep sinkhole that really just is a perfectly circular just drop. I mean, there's houses and buildings just in the middle of a city. Just damn. I don't. Uh, I've. I think I have a vague memory of seeing something about that, but I I don't remember at all where where that is. That you know what? That's something interesting that I I, I and I don't even know if I really have the guts to it, but I think I'd like to have the guts to do it. Is that's uh. 
uh, what do they call it? Spelunking. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there's a, they're basically open cave mouths you go spelunking into. Uh, and they, they basically look like giant sinkholes, but it's a cave that just starts from the ground straight down to get into the cave. And, and, uh, there are some where are so big, uh, somewhere in South America, I'm thinking where, where they, they literally, um, uh, uh, base jump into mm-hmm. it because it's so wide and so deep yeah. they just jump out and pull the chute yeah or jump in yeah, and they, pull uh, the chute pardon me and yeah. uh, that would be that would be fun i i base jumping is something i i could actually see myself tr- attempting yeah there's a really skydiving for that. some reason i'm more scared to skydive <laughs> one gives you more time to panic and pull a second chute the other one doesn't have a second chute because you wouldn't have time to use it Base jumping is very dangerous. Yeah, and I don't know why it would, for some reason, it just, I feel like it would scare me less, but. There is a really popular tandem base jump in Moab, Nevada. Uh, that's very, it's very popular. Uh, Tan- people- I'm sorry, tandem base jump? Yes, because obviously if you're going to, ba- like a tandem skydive, you're strapped to the front of somebody. Oh, I, ain't ne- I ain't never doing that. I'll take, I'll take. 10 times the, the classroom lessons if I have to before I will let somebody well you're, you're, talking, me base jumping, you're talking years and years of skydiving to be able to base jump I, I realize that I, I realize I wouldn't be able to do the base jump I, technically I could but or I would tandem. likely have to do it illegally and I would die on the first attempt so I'm not going That's to so do fun. that but a one and done <laughs> or tandem you just get strapped to the front of someone who's done it 10,000 times never no, because they don't I, want to I, die. I, I, never do. you know? I, I will never do it, but it has happened. It has happened. It has happened. That's why. So, so you wouldn't tandem skydive either? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I, I, I would, ha- I would happily take whatever amount of lessons I, because I've heard, depending on where you go, uh, you could take a very small amount of lessons and then get strapped to somebody's chest and jump off, jump out of a plane at his yeah. beck and call. But but you could take longer lessons, learn better, do some your ground practice stuff, and then actually jump out of a plane with your yeah. own parachute. And I will do that at the drop of a hat. Uh, yeah. I mean, for some of us, we've done more in life, and we just don't want to be strapped to somebody else's. But I don't I don't go anywhere unless I'm the one driving. I don't like to go in other people's cars. I don't like to not be in control. Uh, I spent I spent years doing martial arts, even even tried boxing once. And when I say that, I mean that the guy punched me six times and I and I and I bled out. But uh, <laughs> so I won't count that one. I'm just kidding about that one. Uh, but uh, 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 several martial arts actually for years I practiced uh, as a professional wrestler. Not a good one. But a professional wrestler, nonetheless, uh, and, and I, I even taught though in the gym, taught some of the wrestling, um, and, and done a lot of stuff. But uh, I'm not afraid of any of that stuff. In that sense, if I make up my mind to do it, my fear won't be that uh, that I can't do it. It would literally just be that the parachute is going to fail. But the chances of both your parachute and your backup failing are pretty small. So provided i'm going to the right place and i learn everything properly i wouldn't make my first jump until i could pack a chute properly blindfolded and i'm not even joking i i would feel that way about that i i mean it so, just doesn't so make you, sense you to can't get anymore. your license until you do it you have to do a tandem jump before you can start the process to jump. i'm not sure that's true anymore uh, i i i, I I've been he knows by the fact because he's taking his, he's getting his license. I have my license, yeah. I, I, I have yeah. my skydiving license. But I, 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 I see I think I was in the structure. Maybe he lied to me. I don't know, or maybe it's different here. But because I actually called once and asked about it, and they said, "No, you. This is how many lessons you have to take if you don't want to do tandem." And they go through a, a lot more stuff. Like it takes a long time. Like instead of X amount of hours or whatever it is, it's like X amount of weeks. Before well, they'll let you do it, you, you, and so you, you also jump, can't technically jump. jump alone either. You can't just book a plane and do it. You yeah. have to go with them in their class. The instructor is literally jumping out with you. You just not yeah. strapped to him. So uh, yeah, but, so for USPA A license, which is the first license you get, which allows you to jump anywhere in the world and on your own. You, okay. you the first one is supposed to be a tandem. The second one you do uh, a ground class, so it's an eight-hour ground class, and then you do your first jump. And when you jump, you have two instructors that hold you in free fall, 
uh, one on either side. And then obviously you pull your shoot and then you you canopy down and you land. But your first jump, 100% for USPA, United States Parachuting Association, which is internationally recognized, has to be a tandem jump. So either right. way, oh, you're I, you're I, still I'm going to I'm gonna listen. I'm going to listen to you because out. you know way more. <laughs> I, I sorry I didn't hear that because his laugh actually cut off your voice. But uh, I'm gonna listen to you because you know way more about that that stuff than I do. Uh, it, oh, you can do it. Like, you can do it. Unfortunately, that means if I if I have to tandem jump, I'm never jumping, and that it's an unfortunate thing yeah, because I'm just not putting my hands in somebody else if they decide well, to they have a heart die. attack. If they, they don't yeah, what if he, what if he has a massive coronary and I got I'm like going like this I'm like what the hell. Uh, uh no well, there's an aad so there, there's an automatic activation device that'll automatically deploy your shoot if you reach a certain altitude without deploying it so you're good but what if it fails too I, i've seen this stuff it's what if, what if the sinkhole opens up happened. underneath your bed tonight uh, it's you might possible. as well not go to sleep actually it's not possible stand outside it's, in the middle of the street it's not possible so here we don't get we don't get sinkholes here because of the ground we're on <laughs> nice try anyways uh basically yeah i'm scared so i don't think i could do it uh i hope we're okay that we've gone a minute and two sec uh sorry a mi uh one hour and two minutes and 41 seconds uh well we're not streaming you said right this is just a recording so it doesn't really matter yep. uh, uh okay we're good <laughs> I was just concerned about that as so, uh that and being strapped to somebody's back, but I, <laughs> or somebody's stomach rather. Um, yeah. So that, that's really it. it. That's really it. You just crushed my dream. Thanks, man. Sorry. No, you can crush still the, do it. Crush, crush the Canadian like a bug. <laughs> you, can still do it. you can do it. I believe in you. I jump with a guy that has a fear of heights. And you don't think I do? <laughs> Yeah, but he jumps out of planes every weekend, and he he's afraid of heights. But for some reason, when he jumps I, out of I, planes, listen, I can tell you why he does that. I've always been afraid of heights too. I had um, the job I had where I was working in that chocolate place a few years back, several years back now. Um, every year we had to clean the to, we had to close down the chocolate coating room and clean everything, including on top of the machines. Like we had to do that more often than once a year, obviously. But every, it was a deep cleaning where everything had to be shut down. Uh, and we'd spend like two days doing this and they had to get somebody to go up on top, get on the ladder, get on top of the machine. And everyone's like, oh, you go up there. And I was like, God, it has to get done. What's the matter with you? And it's just me being the right hand man with no authority, but the right hand man of the boss nonetheless. So I'm like, all right, well, it's got to get done. And obviously we're not going to get the boss to do it. Cause he's getting ready to go up the ladder. And I would have, that would have just been bad news for everybody. So I I went I just went up there and I did it and I ter ter terrified I was up there like well, like this the whole time for like two hours cleaning all these machines I had to go up each one and go like this I'm hanging on to pipes that are too hot to hang on to uh, okay. and after that I'm after sorry. that I have no issues anymore uh, with I am still terrified of heights but I got to get up on the roof to clean some windows uh, ang angle roof and I did no 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 absolutely no you're in control. Are you crazy? No, you're not in control of shit. The elastic band that's going to snap your ankles and then it's going to snap and then you're going to fall to your debt. Listen, there are videos on YouTube. <laughs> Tell me that. Oh, and what about that bungee jumping, uh, not jumping, the bungee ride that goes up, you know? Two people yeah. sitting in a chair and the one snaps and goes slamming into the side, puts one of the guys in the hospital. And how about the other one where the guy was lucky? Had he turned his head? The I'm sure there's been someone that's down to the ground. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I'm sure someone's died podcasting before. Unfortunately, not... that might be true. People have died gaming. They've been swatted. It's happened. People get swatted while gaming. You should be careful. Don't let anybody know where you live there. Uh, you don't want to get swatted while gaming. Yeah, Mind I, you, I could, I could fall over and accidentally stab my eyeball in this microphone and then die from a brain concussion. <laughs> You're talking about bungee jumping, though, man. Come on, that is inherently ridiculously I've dangerous. I bungee jump twice. I'll I zip line. I'll I'll zip. Sky dives all you know every weekend. I'll zip line with you. I would skydive at the drop of a hat if I didn't have to tandem on somebody's stomach. Uh, but I, listen, I gotta ask before I forget. I gotta ask a question. 
let's let's go back in time a couple of years. We we'll go to the hot tub time machine or or George Carlin's phone booth or whatever. Uh, go back a couple of years, and we're playing Ghost Recon Wildlands. Which one of you mofos took your helicopter and slammed into me face first with your helicopter on purpose? Which I one was it? Oh, that, that was you. Me. I thought it was Blake. I thought it was Blake. Oh, that's right. It was no. you. But Blake was cheering you on. Yes. I remember yeah. that. I was too busy passed out <laughs> on the ground. No, that <laughs> was no, that was, that was later. That was later. <laughs> we were talking oh. about this earlier. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> but we had to bring up some some jovial stuff though. We absolutely did. I don't know. How long are we gonna go with this one, Robert? What are you what are you thinking? Well, I I, I don't really care. I mean yeah, you don't really care. <laughs> I, I mean, well, I, I don't know that there's a, a time limit, but you know. Well, hey, this is up to, up to you entirely. Um, long form content, right? <laughs> long form content. Yeah. So, okay. Let let me let me ask. Then we're okay, we're talking. We talk about obviously you know, United States, Canada. So, uh, have do you have any aspirations to see any specific places in Canada? I'm not necessarily talking about just the cities. Because cities are cities, you know. Uh, but other things, you know, like the Rockies or the Maritimes or Quebec or anything like that. I would love to see everywhere. Every well, I yeah, mean, yeah, I guess there, yeah. there's no so specifically, um, yeah, the Rockies, like like the Northern Rockies, um, cities. Obviously, like I would love to go to Toronto. Yeah, um, I I really like uh, I like the. I like the cultural aspect of like Quebec, you know, the, the, the French influence. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to see that uh, kind of travel around, but you know, like my mindset is like, there's nowhere in the world that I wouldn't want to go. Like I want to go everywhere. I like, there's, you know, if, if, if I, if I had an unlimited amount of money, yeah, I would be not, I wouldn't do anything except travel. So if you were Elon Musk, you'd say to hell with this damn spaceship. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna head yeah, over. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go head over to Myanmar right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I know the feeling. I listen. I, I I would too if I if I had the the dough. Uh, I I would happily go just about anywhere. Like go to the airport with a passport and and just say you got a ticket. Yep. <laughs> like, I say anywhere where someone's just canceled, I'll wait. Yeah, but maybe like Newfoundland. <laughs> I could go to Newfoundland. I think that's a little interesting area. Well, I I think it'd be I think it'd be great to go to Newfoundland by. <laughs> the Newfoundlanders by they they like it they like their, they they will talk differently. You you start to wonder are these guys Irish oh, no. or are they Newfoundlanders? No, they're Newfoundlanders. They sing in all kinds of songs like I used to buy the built the boat and I used to buy the sailor. <laughs> <laughs> now they got, they got some nice culture. I, I haven't I haven't uh, been to the Maritimes yet. And that was actually my planned vacation from a couple of years ago. A few years ago, COVID stopped that one at first. And then uh, I was either last year or the year before. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember why I didn't go that the last time. But when the COVID stopped, what happened was it was actually after COVID. Uh, but I couldn't go because COVID had ended and everybody's booking everything, right? I could not. And this is months ahead. I couldn't book a plane. I couldn't get a train ticket. I couldn't get a bus ticket. I couldn't rent a car. I didn't own a car at the time. Uh, I couldn't rent a car. All car rentals were booked for six months in advance. Except for maybe come. Oh well, okay. I'll I'll uh, I'll just you know what I'll I'll walk and drive a lot. Rent a, you know I'll rent a bicycle when I get there. Hire a bike or something, right? Uh, take taxis, whatever I have to do. Uh, just get me there. Train, bus, whatever. Nothing. I know. I'm like even if I find something, I got to find a bed and breakfast or something because I couldn't get a an Airbnb. They're booked solid too until almost christmas for crying out loud so i'm like you know what let me see if i can actually find a place that i could stay in september even though i don't want to go take my summer vacation in september so i checked that out there was one place available at the end of september no planes trains or any form of automobiles or john candy for that matter available <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, even that day so I, I was like you know what i guess i'm just gonna drive my car 
uh, and look at some caves uh, up at uh, up in up in Ontario. And then I I picked the Can't wrong remember. two caves, neither of which were actual caves. They were just openings in the rock. <laughs> Drove five hours to see an opening in the rock, and then I had to drive back home. So, well, I guess it's better than no hole <laughs> and no rock. <laughs> well, listen, it's, it's beautiful, but the next time I go out, I'm going to go all the way out. This is basically like a peninsula. Uh, and, and next time, I'm going to drive all the way to the end of it, and then and then you can get on a boat, go to a little island at the end, and it actually has caves in the water so <laughs> uh next time i'm going to see that there's some really absolutely gorgeous places to see in ontario but yeah. uh i while i love to just go out with a camera by myself and do stuff i have no desire to drive for like six or seven hours and then spend the next three days entirely by myself unless i've got you know some place to actually stay for six or seven days where it, you know, it's fine, but I I would have to be moving around a lot uh, in the places I want to go, and it's just not something I want to do alone. It, it kind of makes it less interesting. If I got one place to go and I'm going to stay for three or four or five days, then I'll do it absolutely. But moving around yeah. a lot, I don't I don't really like to do that alone that much. Yeah, I get that. I yeah. I enjoy my my trips I do alone. Um, yeah, you know, tra traveling with friends or, or good company is always. It's, it's always better because you always have someone to like bounce ideas off of, talk to. Yeah. You know, like you you always have something going on, but when you're by yourself, you're forced to at least like traveling in Europe, at least, or, or really anywhere in a in a city, you're forced to like talk to other people and get to know people. And then you you make like some of the greatest friends that you'll ever you'll ever have sometimes traveling alone. Uh and then yeah. some of the great experiences can come from that too. So yeah, that the, the, I can see why that would uh, both the good and well, not bad, but yeah, uh, uh, both ends of it. On on the one hand, there are times where you might want to be out on your own a lot more because there's, there's things you want to do that they may not be interested in. Uh, everybody wants to see a little of this and a little of that. It might give you less time with the thing that you want to see, uh, that kind of stuff. But at the same time, uh, when you are traveling with friends, there's just a, a, a different level of fun that you get to have that you never really give yourself permission to have that same fun when you go by yourself you right. know i've had times yeah. where i refused to stop at an ice cream place because i was alone and i couldn't make up my mind do i really want that right now whereas a friend would have said yeah let's go there or no let's go to the place across the street and get that instead and you know and then you're having fun and you're meeting other people and you're talking to them yeah instead i just you know i'll walk into the store grab a a butterfinger you know, he eat it on the finger. street and keep going. <laughs> and you better not lay a finger. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> it's like Popeye. So chuckle. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, you didn't, watch, you didn't uh, watch too many cartoons, I guess, huh? Uh, well, I do. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Not no, not so much anymore. Uh, hey, great shirt, by the way. Yeah, make sure the camera go. sees that real, real clear. <laughs> and uh, there's going to be links where you can go purchase these from our merch store after you hit that like and subscribe button. That's right. You got to do that. <laughs> like and subscribe. Uh, and Sean's uh, got a really nice mug that some really cool dude bought him for his birthday that yeah. apparently he never uses. But, no, 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 no. Uh, I use it all the time. I just can't okay. get it right now because when I oh. set this up, I have a temporary studio here thing because where I was before wasn't really going to be. It was it was it wasn't permanent anyways, but I had to get everything out of there and move into my personal space here. I just don't really have it set up yet properly. So I'm basically trapped. I'm sitting on the end of my bed. I've got my light here, my camera, the, the nightstand with the computer, the TV over there wall and a wall I, if i get up i'm going to start kicking things over so uh, i basically yeah, i can see the mug i can see the mug over happen. there so uh i'm looking at the mug the mug has been great it's loved the coffee that it's been able to have every morning uh it thanks you uh <laughs> what's your favorite what, uh, what kind of coffee you drink uh i drink 
what is it called? Marble or something. It's 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 a it's a, a brand that's made specially for a cheap store called Giant Tiger, <laughs> which Giant is Tiger. basically one level above a dollar store. <laughs> okay. But they sell better stuff than a dollar store. So it's a Fair. discount store. And they they they've gotten so popular. They started in Quebec, actually. Uh, uh le, le tigre géant. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, they they um <laughs> they started in Quebec and they they're very successful. They have hundreds of stores all across Canada now. Uh, and he has a, he has so now they have their own bands. I don't speak a word. Okay. But you live in Toronto, <laughs> so do you ever encounter situations where like people don't speak English but French? Uh, not so much here, and very rarely. But then again, the only places I've been to in Quebec are are uh, what used to be called Hall, but that was that's now a neighborhood in another town. I can't remember the name. Like, please don't shoot me, anybody who lives there. Uh, it's basically the other side of the river from Ottawa, so a lot of people think of it like a suburb, even though it's in a different province. Um, and most of the people there, because it's next to Ottawa, do speak fluent English and fluent French. Uh, some of them speak one a little better than the other. Uh, I've been in Montreal. God, I don't even know how many times because it's not that it's only five and a half hours from here. And if I go, if I used to go visit a buddy of mine in Ottawa and it was only an hour from Ottawa to Montreal. So we drive to Montreal for a day or two as well. Uh, and Montreal is got so many English speaking people that even if they speak French all day, every day, a lot of them don't even have an accent, even if they were born there. So, yeah. Uh, Ironically, very though, he does thing. speak some German. Well, I explained that, though. German? I knew a German girl who was from, uh, from uh, Süddeutschland. She's the one who first served me the Spätzle und Schnitzel. <laughs> All right. uh, but my Deutsch is not good. Nicht gut. See, I said it wrong. <laughs> I said my German is not good. Yep. <laughs> I could I could probably understand more than I could speak, and that's still uh, maybe a, a, a single cell on a hair on a donkey worth of of, of knowledge. It. Yeah, it's it's hard to learn a language if you're not surrounded by it and yeah. listening to it and having people speak it to you. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And the funny thing is, if I meet people who speak a language, and I'm like, well, speak your, I want to learn your language. Uh, and, oh, that's great. I want you to learn. Yeah. And, uh, and they'll uh, teach me a couple of phrases or a word or something like that. And then I'll go back and I'll try to say something. And then I learn, you know, the next day and they go, oh, that's really good. And I say, can you say it to me in your language? Oh, no, 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 no. I need to speak English. But you speak it fluently. <laughs> okay. Well, you got to meet someone who doesn't speak fluent English. That's the thing. I I got neighbors that speak Cantonese next door. Not a, They don't speak a word of English. There you Unfortunately, go. Like it's so it's so far off. And here's the biggest problem: there is nothing anywhere that uses vocal anything that you can use to speak Chinese or uh, sorry, uh, uh, Cantonese. Mandarin up the yin yang. Yeah. yeah, Mandarin. Yeah. No Cantonese anywhere, and I don't understand it. Mm. But so and it's for if they if they live next door, they spoke Mandarin. I could I could just open up one of several apps walk over and say something and then it would it would pronounce it for them and then it, it'll all be good have you been to china no uh would you ever go or oh, yeah. not at this time I would, <laughs> I would i would go tomorrow yeah I, I have some good friends that that went um not too long ago they said they love it i mean that you know they don't they don't get very many tourists so especially as like a, a tall white guy they say like the people will act like you're a celebrity, like because they only see you yeah. in like movies. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe I'd fit in a little bit more. I'm not that tall. <laughs> or even someone that's just not trying. You know, they they really don't get many tourists outside of you know maybe Mongolia, maybe Vietnam, Korea. Well, lots of places in China do get tourists now, but uh, it, it, at the same time, because of what's been going on the last couple of years, few years, uh, most of the people traveling in China are lifelong travelers who 
their visas have showed them going in and out to specific tourist locations so many times that Chinese officials just don't care. Let them in, let them in, let them in. Yeah. But um, business people uh, obviously well, can go yeah. back and forth because they yeah. have to do their business. You and, have to get a visa. Like that, that's kind of yeah. the first barrier to entry is you, you have to apply for a visa at a Chinese yeah. embassy. Yeah. So that's a, it's, that's a lot of work. And, you know, yeah. I'm sure. Really want, you know, I'll probably do it later, but. Hell, it's not even as easy in Canada. Going to Canada, the states, the states of Canada. It used to be you just 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 go over the border and they say, "What do we, you know? Do you got any fruit? No. Where are you going? Somewhere up there. Well, how long are you gonna be gone? A few days, maybe two weeks. All right, have a good time. Bob's your uncle. You're done. That's it. Half the time they wouldn't even ask you for a driver's license. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we know what changed that. You know, uh, it's, it's just not the same anymore. So now, yeah. now, oh, by the way, that's another thing too, which is actually really good, is the Gordy Howe Bridge. Please tell me you guys know what I'm talking about. No, okay. Uh, if you were in Detroit, you'd know. <laughs> the Gordy Howe Bridge is is a uh, suspension bridge being built uh, between, uh, not Windsor, I can't remember the name of the city, uh, or is it Windsor? I think it is Windsor. Uh, anyways, it's between Detroit and 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 the city um the canadian city and it it is i think one of the longest or maybe the longest bridge across that spans across the border from one country to the other it's like mm -hmm. massive because you know the detroit river is like most people look at it and they're not sure they assume it's a lake if they don't know that it's called the detroit river <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. but it's a river and it is massively wide and what they're not realizing is what drains one great lake into the other great lake which is why it's so massive um and they they just got the connection a few days ago and and there's a handshake uh going from uh, the american iron worker to the canadian iron worker and i think in the american iron worker's case it might have been the canadian but i think it was the american uh he is apparently a second generation iron worker uh so his father had worked on a lot of uh classic buildings probably in the detroit area maybe from somewhere else i'm not sure I didn't. Huh. I didn't get a chance to read the whole article because it was paywalled. <laughs> but uh, I thought that was pretty amazing because it's. I mean, like this. That's something you see every day, and like in my lifetime. I mean, most of the iconic bridges in the U.S. and Canada were built before either one of us were born. Yeah. Uh, mm. So this is this is going to be the iconic bridge of our lifetime that uh, that will be remembered because it's, it's massive. Yeah, th those, those guys that did iron work way back when are a different yeah. breed. Man. Yeah, there, there, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. if you have seen the picture. Uh, oh, yeah. But there's a picture from um, Chicago where these iron workers were sitting on a steel beam that was being suspended eating lunch. And, you know, they have like, you know, their hats and their Sunday shoes on and I mean, they're just dressed like untethered. average people. Yeah, untethered. And then the a current group of iron workers wanted to recreate that picture today. And so they all sat on an iron beam. And I don't know if it's the exact same location, but it looked pretty close. It did the same thing, but they all have their, you know, their jackets, their work vests, their boots, and they're all tethered. And they, you know, it's just like those dudes way back then. They're a different breed, man. I tell you, I that's uh, it goes it goes beyond being a different breed. I mean, yeah, that's, uh, well, that they're, they're like they're like the gods, you know. Yeah, um, like that was their normal. Though. They didn't know anything different because there, you know, there wasn't. They weren't really. There's no regulated. OSHA. Yeah, there's no regulation <laughs> yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, no, that, yeah, no. It was a completely. Uh, a, you know. Sorry, it was a completely different era. Uh, things were completely different then. Um, I can't believe I can't get that to open. Why can't I get that to open? All right, never mind. I'll just do it like this. All right, I'm going to share. Oh, I'm just right. I got to get my, my mouse onto the other screen. Hit the old share ski button again. Hopefully this goes a little more smoothly than the last time. Oh, it does because I can, do it. I can share the Chrome tab this time. <laughs> and I'm hoping you can see this. I did. Well, you have to click show on stream. I guess you're not seeing that. Uh, somehow I'm not. Um, yeah, that's the picture. Yeah, yeah, and for some reason I can't get that to come up like full screen, and I, I I'm not gonna mess with it. But you can basically get the idea because you can see uh beside the two, like there's there's the there's the old one, there's the new one, 
Uh, unfortunately, I wanted to open up this one over here because you could see exactly what you were talking about, but it's absolutely amazing. But you might notice the height difference between the first one and the second one. I think the first one, they're higher up, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does look like it. Yeah. And or it so, could be the buildings but, are just taller in the second picture. That's also possible. But I again, I couldn't make it big enough. You guys are probably seeing it better than me because I had to look over my laptop. I, I couldn't see it on this screen for some weird reason. It's very strange. Um, I suppose if I moved everything over the, to, to this screen, uh, I'd be able to see it better. But um, nonetheless, <laughs> that's, that is crazy, though. Yeah, things things are very different, though. You know what? I should I should ask this question. Uh, uh, like, do you mind uh, if I ask how, how old are you? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Okay, so I'm guessing so you probably have no memory of riding in the back of a station wagon on a mattress on the way to the lake, no seat belts, just flapping around. 80 miles I do have down the a memory of riding down to the beach in what was that old uh had the sliding doors like a camper van it was like a camper van like a like a Volkswagen bus no we had one growing up that we would just lay we take the chairs out and we would lay just like blankets and stuff when we lay in it it had the red like velvet on the inside or some Something. Oh, you don't really was a that was a was semi a Astro van. Yeah, it was a van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The van. It was a conversion, a semi conversion <laughs> Astro van. That's not that you know what? I'll give you that. I'll give you that because that does sound a lot like something you would have done in the 70s, except you would have done it to a Volkswagen bus in the 70s. Uh, but that sounds like it's pretty much the same idea, you know. Uh, but I mean literally, uh there are things that we did in the 70s that you they're illegal today. I, I'm not just talking about people have gotten smarter. I mean, literally illegal. Uh, people just hanging out in the back of a pickup truck at 50 miles an hour down the highway, drinking beer in the in the open bed of the pickup truck. <laughs> yeah. And, Did you know that that's why they started putting beer windows on them? Because when the seatbelt laws first came in, and then they started having laws where you couldn't have open liquor unless it was had to be in the back and still in the box or in the case or whatever. They started putting beer windows in the pickup trucks. Yeah. And then that's why they call them a beer window. People say, it's a utility window. They didn't have utility windows on pickup trucks until they started passing seatbelt and, and 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 enforcing liquor laws uh, with people driving them. Yeah, and, and you know what's interesting? I talk to my coworkers about this all the time. People talk about like the good old days or back in the day we would, we used to be able to go just walk down to the gas station and no one would mess with you know people talk yeah. about it as if they're safer it, you know since the 80s 80s to now almost crime across the board has gone down by almost over 50 percent no crime. that's actually true that's but that's per that's per capita just to be to be clear well statistic yeah if you're talking per hundred thousand person basis so you know yeah it's a it's averaged out across the population but Back in the eighties, you were way more at risk of getting kidnapped, getting raped, drugged, murdered, assaulted. Out fifty percent more likely than you are today. Yeah, but well, statistically, that yeah, statistically, that statistically that might be true. But that, but it's I think what you're saying is people have to understand is is that that doesn't mean that you were fifty percent more likely that it was going to happen. It was just a fifty percent greater chance. So if you had uh That's one it. in a million chance that it was going to happen to you, it might be one in five hundred thousand now. Still yeah. probably not going to happen. But the opportunity is we still and I understand that. But here's here's the thing I think that that uh that your friend might have been talking about and, and I'm sure your your dad can attest to this too. Um when I was like 17 18 19 20 21 even 24 25 i could be in a bar some guy said what are you looking at my girlfriend you know and, and a fight starts and you know you go outside let's say he he gets more shots than i do or his are harder than mine i go down he basically yells at me for a minute or so puts his hand out helps me up or his friend helps me up we go inside he buys me a beer or vice versa and it was like that and schoolyard fights same thing punch a kid out in the schoolyard he punches you out in the schoolyard next day you're at school going hey man how you doing hey, hey, hey. we cool yeah we're cool uh i mean it's not, not like now now it's basically somebody yells at you and you're like oh god i hope he doesn't have a gun 
Uh, so I think the thing is, is that regardless of whether there's more people or less people with guns, there's more people willing to use them now. There's also more people with illegal ones. See, I think the problem, which is the problem. I Not. That- I think that perspective exists because your access to information. And I think it's, you're more like, no, it's my experience. It's from experience. You have no idea how many times I've had people go like, go like this, lift their shirt and show me the gun in their waistband because they knew that I was going to kick their ass if they kept coming at me. And so they're showing me a gun to say, you better back up, buddy. Well, you're the one who came up to me. Well, not did not literally today, but yeah. yeah, But I mean, like recent, well, yes. right. Okay. But yes. So, uh, listen, it happens no less. It happens no less than a few times a year. Well, right. But then you have to you look know? at it from like you know a lot. That's just that dude. Right? That's just that. That's just in places like a supermarket. Well, I right. Mean, but growing it's... up, growing up, you were more likely to live in a smaller town with less people, right, where everyone knows each other. Now you're more likely to live in a big city like Toronto, where there's a higher crime rate because of there's more population density. So you're running into more people with more I agree. Guns. No, I agree with you know, that 100%. Like there's more people and there's more crazy people. If you have more people, you're going to have more smart people. You're going to have more crazy people. You're going to have more dumb people. You're going to have more people who are healthy and more people who are not healthy. You have more of everything. So it's not necessarily that there's more of a percentage of the bad. There's just more bad, period, because yeah. there's more everything. Right. And that is that is absolutely true. And I, I preach that all the time. But I literally mean what it is, is in the day, if you weren't having a gang war or robbing somebody, which I didn't, (laughs) uh, you didn't shoot people, period, unless you were murdering somebody. People didn't pull out a gun for a street fight. At that time, I'm telling you right now, nobody pulled out guns for street fights. (laughs) It didn't happen. I mean, okay, let me rephrase that. It didn't. I'm not talking about mafia. We're not talking. Listen, I'm not talking about organized crime. I'm talking about Joe Schmo in a bar who the worst case scenario is he'd break a beer bottle over your head, which would still be bad. But that was, you know, 30 years ago, whatever today, or maybe 40 years ago uh, today, that same guy would either get a gun, go to his car and get a gun or call six of his buddies who would come down with guns to shoot you and anyone who got in the way. They don't care. You start yelling at somebody on the street. People, you get somebody cuts you off with their car. You honk once and they brake check you, which again is something that's been going on for decades. They brake check you, lean out the window and go, oh, what do you want? You want to go in? You're like, shut up and keep driving. Then they get out of the car and they're going like this with a gun and going, "Eh, what are you going to do? I'm going to drive you asshole because why are you stopping? I feel like that's that's a that, that's a you know a cognitive bias based on where you. I, I mean, I live in Texas where the gun ownership is like the highest in the world, and <laughs> I don't sure. come across that. And I go you know, out constantly. <laughs> I'm always out. Oh, I'm not saying that happens every day, but honestly, it doesn't have to happen to me. Uh, you simply need to actually see the YouTube see videos, so a lot right. of them which are in place like wrong. But here's and the thing: when like Winnipeg you a confirmation bias because Winnipeg you watch these videos. It's not just you... that's happened to me too, though. Winnipeg Winnipeg has a population of less than eight hundred thousand people, and it happens in Winnipeg daily to somebody. <clears throat> My point is, is that where people used to have fist fights, now they'll pull out a gun in a situation that a hunt that. 40 years ago, they wouldn't have pulled out a gun. Maybe they still had one, but they didn't pull it out. And yeah, and maybe. by the way, just so as you know, Canada, Canadians, I'm about to choke on something. <laughs> Sorry. Canadians have way more guns than Americans think. Uh, guns are not illegal per se in Canada. People do have gun ownership and stuff. And a lot of people, like a lot of people in America, have more than one lot. So. It's yeah. not like they don't. It's just that we don't have, we do not I, have any kind of concealed carry or open carry here. You can't do I, it. I think the difference is in the uh, 80s, you didn't have the uh, movie, you didn't have social media to look for and find all these anecdotal videos of someone getting shot in a bar. Well, it happened more. You just didn't see it. Now you see it, you know, someone gets shot anywhere. You're going to see, you could see someone getting shot in, you know, in Indonesia. On right, your phone. Yeah, like, yeah oh, God, absolutely. It's so dangerous. <laughs> but you're seeing like one anecdotal video that's not really evidence of 
you know, maybe a widespread issue. Yeah. It's just you know, isolated incidents that then now you use to kind of make your perspective. I, I honestly think that it's a mixture of both. I think yeah. back then there was less of a propensity to use a gun as there is now, but there's also a lot more visibility when it is used. So I think it's actually a mixture of both that creates yeah. this problem. <laughs> it's just like, oh, the it is. like it oh my is. gosh, the weather's so bad. Well, you know what? Tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, they've all been happening for a really long time. But now we get to see every time one happens, we get to see the that is a, yeah. aftermath. Yeah, we see we see all of the news, we see yeah. the wars, we see the battles, we see everything. And in some cases, people are getting desensitized from seeing it. Very much. But here's what I'm talking about, just to make myself a hundred percent clear. This is something I observed long before this whole thing became a big thing on the Internet, because people getting in your face and then deciding to go and run to the car and get a gun is something that's been going on for about 15 to 20 years, where 25, 30 and 40 years ago, they might have just punched it out with you in the parking lot and then went home. One of the reasons why is because the younger people are only seeing that themselves. And a lot of it is because that's what they're seeing on the internet. That's what they're hearing from their gang buddies. If they are in gangs, if they're not in gangs, they're just assuming it's a normal thing. To them, in their head, this is what you're supposed to do, and this is how you're supposed to behave. Now, there's obviously going to be places where this is a little bit less prevalent. As you mentioned, you live in Texas. It's not as bad a thing because, let's face it, everyone's allowed to carry a gun. And, and and it's and you know it's it's well i should say everyone except for convicted you know felon, but you know what i mean um and some states are like that too but there's also states that don't allow you to carry they're not open carry they're not concealed carry you're just allowed to own your guns or you you can you can put it in the trunk of your car i know i'm not sure which states those are but there's a few where you you don't carry a gun on on you unless it's conceal only i think i think open carry is a harder one right yeah yeah um and in all honesty, I'd rather be in a place where open carry because yeah, I'd like to know that the guy has one. <laughs> you know, but other people say I'd rather it was concealed carry, and I didn't know. I said, yeah, yeah, "Sure," until you piss the guy off, and he turns out to be crazy. But here's the thing, and this is a big argument that uh, uh, we've been making. Uh, a lot of people are making in Canada because you know they're like, well, "We need to restrict this, and we need to restrict that." And the biggest point is, is that uh, legal gun owners are very rarely responsible for murders and violent crime in canada it's the illegal gun toters i don't even want to say owners and most of the time those guns aren't even stolen from canadians they're brought illegally over the border they're stolen from americans um and brought over the border illegally by canadian and american gangs that, that are uh just making money doing it they're they're you know um and it's and, and in all honesty the fact of the matter is, I, I would imagine that most American gun crime is also produced by people who shouldn't have the guns, not people who have licenses. They've been mm -hmm. suspended. They've been convicted already. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's obviously exceptions because so many people are allowed to have guns there. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it just it doesn't make a lot of sense because most legal gun owners, you know, they've taken lessons. They've got licenses. Uh, a, a great many Canada and the United States, uh, even if they're not hunters, they go they go to clubs and shoot, you know, or they own property or own has a friend who owns property where they can shoot on their property. And we have that in Canada too. You know, you own a, you own a big enough piece of property that's far enough away from anyone else's. Um, you're allowed to use it use a gun on your on your, on your property yeah. to a certain extent, up to a certain point, right? Um, and again, that's a lot of thing a lot of Americans don't know about Canada is is uh canadians love their guns just as much as americans do yep. <laughs> it's a misnomer so, you heard it here canadians <laughs> love their guns you know so uh personally i i uh i, I love my uzi i'm just kidding we just... <laughs> wait, wait, that's that's entirely illegal in canada i'm telling you right now you can't have as an uzi in canada no <laughs> okay who's i don't even i don't even actually i don't have a gun license and to be honest with you for many years i didn't want one i didn't care but after after knowing other people who are gun owners and responsible gun owners uh they get you know they it's it's something that's a, more appealing to me uh not even not even a sense of protection i just like to be able to go out to uh 
to uh to arrange and 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 uh and shoot and have fun what's that you can rent a gun and arrange uh actually yeah you can but you can only do that if you're already fully licensed in canada oh oh, okay yeah you you, you have to go through the whole ball yeah sorry you you don't need a license to even own a gun here yeah, yeah, no, no here, think. here, absolutely, you do. Uh, yeah. Although I don't know what it's uh, how it is for Americans visiting. I suppose if I, I you know what, I'm gonna look that up. I want to oh, know laws. because there's there's legal gun owners in the U.S. that uh, are responsible, and if they were visiting somebody, would they be able to actually go to a gun range with a with a with a Canadian who has a, a legal license? Oh, that has a license? Oh, I don't know, but you wouldn't be. Yeah, able to I don't know. Them. Oh no, you wouldn't. Probably. I'm actually curious. I want to find out about that. And maybe, maybe, maybe bring that up later. Because and which, uh, like I, I don't know. Ago, Texas passed a law where you don't need a license or a permit to carry a gun in public. You can just carry a gun. Anyone can. Wow, that's that's see, now that carry. that to me is foreign. Uh, yeah, that's extreme. I don't know. That's I would extreme. go that. I wouldn't know. I would want to go that far. To be honest with you. Yeah. Any uh, any person, anyone can carry a gun. Doesn't matter. And that is scary. I mean, now, please tell me there's an age limit of 18 at least on that one. Right. You have to be able to purchase the firearm. <laughs> but one thing but, that, that that I find odd, though, well, not as a, it's like there are uh, videos on the Internet. And of course, if, if you're not paying attention, you just look at one video, then everybody's got comments and they don't know the, the gist of a story. Like, you know, a kid uh, being taken to the range and there's a bunch of comments. So oh, what kind of an idiot parent would take their kids to a gun? Well, here's the thing. If you live a responsible life, to a certain point, and you're teaching your child properly at a certain age. I again, I wouldn't give a four year old a gun, you know, but it's weird. So I actually one of one of my favorite YouTubers is actually it's called Autumn's Armory. This I I sort of watch it. It's the the, the father uh, and the mother started the channel originally. I think I, I don't know the whole story. But this girl was 11 at the time. She'd been shooting since she was younger than that. She did shooting competitions and, and won. And she, I think she's 13 now. She shoots better than most adults. Like she grabs like shotguns and she's a tiny thing too, tiny for her age. And she's got double barrel shotgun and she's just like, and she's nailing these shots. And they, they, they shoot, uh, I think it's skeet. Yeah, I think it's skeet. They're doing skeet on on uh, on on the uh, on their uh, some of their videos, and she's hitting these skeet with a shot too. But her favorites are when she takes a handgun, uh, and she's like grabbing a forty-five with one hand. This tiny little thing. She's four foot eleven, I think, or something like that. Uh, and she's one handing with a forty-five, and she's like bang, 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 bang. Didn't miss a shot. I'm looking at it, I'm like, what, are you kidding me? And she's making, she's making fun, poking fun, if I should say, at, at some guys who, who were saying, you don't train like that. I think it was a, a police person. He says, you can't do that. You have to use two hands or something. And she's like, what? And yeah, she's like, no problem. Shooting, yeah, competitive shooting, too. A lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's uh, like, it's, it's really amazing. But So I guess my point of that, though, is that, if you're responsible and you do things right, I mean, there's certain things you can teach kids from from a very young age if you're being completely responsible about it. This girl, and she's done videos on this, she's literally pulled guns apart and put them back together. Cleaned and repaired them and put them back together. Uh, and and it's like, and I know adults who can't do it without a manual, and even with a manual, it might take longer. Yeah. Right, so I couldn't do it. I... <laughs> <laughs> with a YouTube video. I don't own a gun though, so of course I could sorry. You could with a YouTube video, you do it. Well, but I don't own a gun, so it's not happening anyways, right? Uh I'm not a gun owner. But um nonetheless, I have actually considered actually going and getting getting a gun license one day because I wouldn't mind being able to go out and, and do, do do some of that shooting and stuff. I don't know about the skeet. I I think I'd be stuck at that. And again, Canadian this is Canada. So I think it's about seven thousand dollars per per buckshot uh, shell, um, <laughs> or maybe it's seven thousand dollars per pellet. <laughs> but uh, no, it's probably quite expensive. I imagine. I imagine. Ski shooting is a lot of fun. Ski, yeah. Um, 
I, I, I would imagine, but I, I honestly don't think I would be good at it at all. I don't know why. I think I would, no I could anything. learn. Well, yeah, true. But I just, I, for some reason, I, I maybe, maybe I never would cause it's in my head already. But, uh, for some reason, I do think I would be better, uh, uh with the target rifles. Uh, I don't think I would be good at it right away. Obviously I'd have to, I'd have to practice, but, but I mean, I, uh, to me, I think that would be more fun. But anyways, that's, uh, I'll talk about that situation. Yeah, well, it's, it's not as hard as it <laughs> seems. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. there's there's certain things, there's certain little tricks that you can learn that um, enable you to be far more accurate than what you think you can be. And, and ironically, I was actually way more accurate with a pump action Remington than I ever was with a semi-automatic shotgun. <clears throat> wow yeah, yeah I, I could okay. i could do pump action remington like nobody's business and just pluck them out of the air and, and i i'll never forget the last time i went shooting has been i don't know a couple of years ago um we had like it was like this event the church put on and like we all went out to this guy's farm there's like 100 acres you know so we could do whatever we wanted and uh everyone brought the shotguns and i tried all these semi-automatics and i couldn't hit anything and i'm like I was like, let me just go back to my old trusty Remington. The guy had the exact same shotgun that I used to use 20 years ago when I was married to Anthony's mom. Her, her dad has all kinds of weapons. But I picked that up, first one out of the chamber, man. I was like, all right, man. I just started plugging them off. They're like, why weren't you using that the whole time? I'm like, I'm going to try something different. But see, that's why I just use what I know because I work. It works. You know, I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know it's just you know it's kind of finding your groove like anything and you know uh i could probably pick up that remington tomorrow and after a couple practice shots i'd be able to start hitting skeet like crazy yeah i guess i guess a lot of things are like that i mean i i I know i know the 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 only kind of shooting i have any experience with really is 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 of course you know like ghost recon and modern warfare (laughs) (laughs) and we we all know how good i've done in that if anybody watches this and you're and you've watched his gaming channel then you've probably heard me on there Uh, (laughs) i practiced i practiced yesterday though i'm getting i'm getting a little better after watching that one youtube video and i'm getting i'm getting a little bad i never shared i never shared the screenshots with you i'll do that later good uh I, I finished first with a worse score than I usually get when I finished last. So I won't brag about that one. <laughs> it, it was a very odd game. It was a very odd game. It was a stacked on the other team, but we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, I think on that note, we're going to wrap it up because we're approaching two hours. Oh, nice wow. Yeah, we went way on. Been fun. A lot of, uh, you know, just lighthearted conversation. It's been awesome. It's been great having him on the, you know, the, the podcast chit chatting and talking about some stuff. So um yeah, it's been it's been fun. Really enjoyed it. Uh, we yeah, we definitely. Uh sorry, I'm just looking at the calendar here because I'm trying to see how much time is uh, uh okay so we got next week. All right. So basically next week we have a normal show. Uh and then after that we're gonna do our few extra ones for uh can can dependence week can dependence day <laughs> can dependence week yeah because uh, yeah. uh july 1st canada day then we got the second third and then it's the fourth of july baby so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna light it up uh and do some extra stuff <laughs> uh <laughs> Talk about yeah. some really good I'm gonna try to get out and get some video and stuff I can share on Canada Day and stuff and throw some stuff in you know, in between and show you what, what Canada is like here. And, uh, and we'll talk about what's going on. What are you, what are you going to be doing on independence day? Both of you question for both of you. Uh, actually I'll probably be at home. We'll probably do some grilling out. You know, I have the kids over, oh, yeah. the grandkids over. Um, yeah. I used, I mean, there's been a few times I've gone in Nashville, but it's, it's literally Nashville has in the last five or six years, they've had the top, one of the top five, fireworks shows fourth of july in the entire country so there's like 150,000 people in nashville and it's just not something i want to be a part of it's just too much 
So I'll probably, you know, I hear you, man. I skip, I skip the one at the beaches in Toronto because, uh, uh, I, the last few years, they've estimated over a million people showing up. (laughs) More people than the entire city of Winnipeg one year. They can't fit on the beach, by the way. So they don't go. They just try to get there. I think they end up with about 75,000 people on this beach. And the traffic is like, these are all like yeah. one lane and a parking, one lane and parking. There's buses trying to get people to the place and the buses aren't moving because there's, you know, so I, I'm like, you know, I won't even walk there anymore. And never yeah. mind trying to drive or take a, a transit. Uh, so I, I, sometimes I go out to Canada's Wonderland and I, and I park uh, someplace across the road walk over and then uh, and then i just uh sit on a hill outside the parking lot and watch fireworks i did that well, last fortunately, year uh our my the, my city gallatin uh they do a fireworks show and it's literally in the park that i can sit at my driveway's edge and watch the entire show from my driveway so <laughs> that's convenient <laughs> <laughs> that is convenient I wish I could yeah. do that. The only thing I can see from my driveway is whoever next door setting <laughs> off a Roman candle or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Blake, are right, you are well, you there for for the fourth? Or are you gone at that point? I'll be in San Antonio. San Antonio, and what do you what do you got going on? Just hanging out with family, I just, or I, I think I'm hosting a pool party. Just have a uh, I'm sorry, hosting a pool party? Did you say? Yeah, yeah, just a bunch of friends coming over. Uh, hang on one second. I don't think I got my invitation yet. Uh, oh, <laughs> all right. Well, we did say we had to go, so we'll let it go at that. And Open I'll, I'll send. What's that? <laughs> Open invite. Anyone wants to come, including you. <laughs> I now. appreciate that. Too bad. Too bad I can't afford to do it. But believe me, I would love it if I could. Uh, but it's been great having you on, man. It's finally to actually finally get to see your face uh, after all those times of. Uh, uh, being hit by helicopters, I know it wasn't it wasn't always your dad. I know you attempted to do it two or three times in that one game, but it was a lot of fun. Um, yep. Nonetheless, uh, it was great having you on. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was good talking. Thanks for having me. Yeah. On. yeah. All right. Well, All right, I'll well, say my goodbye now. And this is Robert and Blake from the U.S. And we'll catch you next episode. Have a good one. <laughs>